Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me on the Slice of Healthcare podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Today, I'm joined by Teresa Seek, the CEO and co-founder at WebCare Health. Teresa, how are you today? Great. Thanks, Jared. Thanks for having me on today's podcast. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on. I, I like to, you know, we like to keep these things short and sweet. So I think it'd be great if we could jump right into you telling us a little bit about your background, and then we'll talk more about WebCare Health and some of the topics you and I wanted to cover here today. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Um, for everybody here, I'm Teresa Seek. I'm the CEO and co-founder at WebCare Health. We're a leading remote patient monitoring company. Um, my background is clinical. I spent nearly 20 years in clinical practice. Uh, that allowed me really to experience the pain points in a practice and to additionally understand patient needs. I, I truly feel like I understand the struggles administrators are facing today. That's why it's more important than ever for healthcare practices to be innovative and adopt new service uh, models to better care for patients. When I did my uh, PhD, my dissertation really was on focused on healthcare disparities. Um, that allowed me really to recognize the need to improve access to care and reduce these disparities that we are experiencing. In 2014, when we opened WebCare Health, we brought a new care delivery model to light that helped facilitate and build internal remote monitoring programs. The model allowed providers to really continue to control their patients' uh, care and practice medicine without having the worries of facilitating a program or worrying about software or distribution. So WebCare Health really was able to identify um, the right patients for these programs, help get them enrolled and support the patient in practice by tracking um, billable events and care model, the, the entire care model um, and help streamline that workflow for the clinic. Interesting. At, at what point, uh, I guess, I, I like to ask this sometimes, like, did you, did you know, um, did you always want to start a company? Was that something early on you knew in your career that like, hey, eventually I want to start up a company? Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe it was in the healthcare space, maybe it wasn't, but I, yeah. I this is something I've been trying to ask more. I'm trying to see, like, at what point did a lot of people know, like, yeah, I want to start a company? Right. I would say I didn't um, know that. Um, obviously, I, I wanted to help people. And so I went into medicine, spent a good majority of my career uh, practicing medicine and helping patients uh, from that angle. Um, and then just recognized there was an opportunity to become an entrepreneur and, and build something new and different that really would continue to impact patients' lives. And so it was later in my career that I, I really figured out that this was something that was, um, you know, it was, is a, it was in my book, right? It was something I was supposed to do and, and try to bring a new innovative solution to healthcare um, from my experiences. Right. Yeah, that's uh, most people. It's, it's kind of a pretty good 50-50 split, right? Where people knew like, oh, yeah, I knew day one yeah. I wanted to start something up. But it's, it's really cool when you can tie it back to that personal why, right, wanting mm -hmm. to help people. So that's, that's awesome. Right. Uh, one, of, one of the things I always ask, and you already talked a little bit about this, so you don't have to go into full detail on every aspect of it uh, just in your intro, is I like to focus in on every time I have someone on for the first time, the why, how, and what of the company. Can you give us the why, how, what of WebCare Health? And then we'll talk a little bit about some of the other topics like remote patient monitoring and some other things we want to dive into. Yeah. Um, I think when, when I was a part um, of building WebCare Health from the beginning, my, my whole focus was trying to identify uh, a need or a gap in our current care model. Um, so in 2014, when we opened WebCare Health, there was nothing like this in the space. We built a delivery model that really um, helped go into clinics and say, we will help facilitate this. Don't outsource it. Let's create a partnership and collaborate on the best ways to, to manage patients. And so we integrated um, our own software platform. So we have um, our own proprietary software that is very flexible and can meet the needs uh, of a practice. And then we wrapped some service around that. We said, we understand that you do not have the employees um, or really the wherewithal to, to run a separate business on top of uh, practicing medicine. Let us handle that for you. So we built an entire business model that really focused on facilitating an entire program for a physician uh, or for a clinical practice. 
it would allow them really to continue to practice medicine on a day-to-day -day basis without the worries of, of facilitating a program. And it really allowed them to funnel their expertise to identifying and diagnosing patient problems and concerns and coming up with a care plan to best manage them. Interesting approach. Yeah, it's a cool name, by the way, too. I know that's, that's I, I like to uh, always point out uh, if I like the name or not, yeah. and a lot of company, it's it's not the, it's not the end of the world, right? But right. based on what you're doing, your why, how, and what, and then you know some of the topics we're going to go through today, it just makes sense. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Thanks. Let's let's shift focus a little bit, and this has been a topic that I haven't talked so much about on like my podcast, but like some of our uh, like partner podcasts, mm -hmm. one, one being Nick's Notes with uh, <laughs> the the former founder of uh, Heal, Nick Desai. Mm -hmm. Uh, he talked recently about remote patient monitoring, but for for our audience and for the you know I, I think a lot of people understand the uh, the, the the core of what mm -hmm. remote patient monitoring is. But uh, if you could talk a little bit about it, that'd be that'd be yeah. great. Yeah, thanks, Jared. Yeah, I, I think you know most people need to understand what remote monitoring truly is and how it is different from other um, tools that are being used in in healthcare today. So remote monitoring um, really allows a provider to collect actionable data about their patients in real time from their homes or when they're remote from the office. It is not a video chat. It is not a scheduled visit. It is truly just an ongoing collection of real time data of things like blood pressure, weight, heart rate, um, ECG readings, pulse oximetry or glucose. Um, on top of that, WebCare Health has wrapped a few other very interesting or unique features, and we said, on top of collecting physiological data, we have the capability of collecting so much more from patients that give us a much more clear picture of what's going on in their day-to-day -day lives. And so WebCare Health um, immediately started collecting symptoms. So what's going on with your patient on a day-to-day -day basis? How do they feel? We collect behavior and lifestyle information. What this does for the provider is gives them a much clearer picture of what's going on with their patient versus simply knowing what a weight is or what a blood pressure is. It's like sitting down with them in an office visit, but it's really just looking at their data on a dashboard. So from experience, I know in a 15 or 20 minute office visit with a patient, I'm not provided with all the information. I really need to make the best decision for that patient. It's a snapshot. So if I can collect more information, more data, more behavior, more lifestyle um, information on my patient when they're away from the clinic, then I know that I can create a more clear picture and focus in on what that care plan might be for the, that patient. And I think remote monitoring allows providers to do that. It, it, it gives them the opportunity to be much more proactive instead of reactive. It allows them to monitor trends and identify different gaps or opportunities that really will improve patient care. When we look at other um, services that are available in the market, remote monitoring, as I just described, is much different than a telehealth visit where people are on video um, conference to discuss a patient, um, how well they're doing. It's kind of like a face-to-face -face visit, but it's through a camera. Um, there's different chronic care models that allow uh, physician offices to track some of this information and, and really put together a care plan. But remote monitoring has its own little niche um, and really just augments or complements what physicians are doing in their day-to-day -day practice. Yeah, and I think when you, when you, when you couple that with, uh, you know, CMS release, they've been releasing much more information regarding uh, remote patient monitoring. Um, and, and obviously, the remote patient monitoring became even more important with the emergence of telehealth. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. um, because now you, you really want to, how do you, people trying to create virtual clinics and stuff like that, how do you create a really good end-to-end -end experience for the healthcare professional when you're not in front of them, right? And you don't have all, maybe all the information that you need to be able to, to, to judge. And so being able to remote, uh, go through the remote uh, patient monitoring process. I mean, you've seen a lot more companies now in the mm -hmm. space trying to, to go after it. And it's, um, it's really interesting. And it'll be really cool to see where it's at in five years from now. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's, it's, it, it, it's taken a lot of leaps in the last five years. So mm -hmm. um, it, well, it'll be very interesting. Yeah. I, I want to shift uh, focus, Teresa, now to uh, 
you know, one of the things that you and I wanted to discuss here today was a recent clinical study you had with Mercy One. Mm -hmm. um, can you go into detail on that and kind of what the what the initial outcomes were? Um, you know, how did that end up going? Yeah, absolutely. So WebCare Health recently completed a, a case study uh, of 450 heart failure patients um, with a large cardiovascular group in, in the Midwest, the Iowa Heart Center, Mercy One. Um, and, and we identified with using remote patient monitoring that this group of patients utilize the emergency room less than 1% of the time, and their hospital readmission rates um, were also less than 1% when the national um, readmission rate for heart failure is, is really between 20 to 24%. So pretty significant reduction in hospital readmission rate, um, demonstrating that remote patient monitoring has a clear uh, benefit or impact on, on these chronically ill patients. Uh, there was another thing that you and I, when we were kind of going through this initial call, you wanted to kind of highlight. Uh, can, as we wrap up here, right, we usually keep these things pretty yeah. uh, pretty uh, short and sweet. Can, yeah. you, can you go through also talking about uh, you did a recent market study as well and mm -hmm. what that entailed and kind of what, what were the results of that? Yeah, absolutely. So WebCare Health recently uh, conducted a market survey of, of healthcare executives, clinical leaders, and healthcare professionals in regards to remote patient monitoring. Some of the key findings um, that we found were that about 40% of those surveyed really did leverage some form of remote monitoring. Now, it might not be the remote monitoring of uh, physiological data, it might be monitoring of implantable devices, but nonetheless, there, there were about 40% that were leveraging some form of remote monitoring. And 66% of those really said that remote monitoring helps identify gaps in care. I think, the key takeaway from the survey we did was that the, the barriers to adopting uh, remote patient monitoring, one was cost, and second was change, clinical and patient resistance to change. And I think partnering with the right remote patient monitoring program or company will help alleviate some of those concerns because with WebCare Health, we really roll those devices or monitors into the program so that the clinic is not buying them up front and the patient doesn't buy them. It's just rolled in as part of the program because we want it to be easy to use for patients and not really limit who can um, really become part of the program. So successful programs will need to really have an ease of use uh, factor, offer some integration to EHR and workflows um, so that there isn't that resistance from the clinical side and then be able to engage patients on, on the patient side so that they're motivated um, about changing their own health care. I think that the future, what we found in this survey was that 60% um, of respondents felt that remote patient monitoring was going to be a new standard of care in the next two years. I think that speaks volumes, that people are really moving towards new care models, and that remote patient monitors really need to set these organizations up for success and help them identify where the gaps are and, and where they can help solve uh, some of their issues. I think future, you know, the future of RPM is, is proactive in a simple word. We, we really don't want to be caught um, being reactive. We want to use a leader in the RPM space to help uh, make them a leader in care delivery. And last thing I always ask guests, Teresa, what's yeah. next for the company? <laughs> Yeah, I think the, the thing that we want to do is continue to bring um, services to healthcare providers that, that benefit patients, right? I started the company um, wanting to help patients um, and continue to help patients as I had done in, in my previous experiences in healthcare. We will continue to do that. We'll continue to add new features, uh, bring on new technology, incorporate more artificial intelligence, add more disease states as our software is very flexible uh, to add more uh, chronic diseases, um, give other patients the opportunity to uh, take part in remote monitoring services. So I think we're going to meet the needs of, of the providers and the hospital systems out there um, with our you know, flexibility and ability to be nimble um, to make sure that we're really, really meeting healthcare where it needs to be. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Well, Teresa, hopefully we can have you on again in the near future. Yeah. But uh, this was really your intro podcast. Give the audience that, that, you know, those who have heard of you, 
get to hear from you again. They love it, yeah. I'm sure. And then those who haven't, they get to know you. They get to know WebCare Health. And then we can continue to have other episodes in the future where we dive into some other topics. But thank you again so much for being yeah. a guest. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Jared.